I want to talk about the four stages that the body goes through from wellness to death. And I help you to understand a little bit how, how medical doctors pick off symptomology wrongly. Let's think about it. You know, first of all, when you're in your mother, your lymphatic system is hooked to mom. So basically, uh, as, as luck would maybe not have it, you're starting off with a compromised lymphatic system. Of course, you're starting off with compromised cells because every cell in your body is a genetic cell. Sorry. And the human body. Think about the human body and how miraculous this is. Think if you're going to build you a house totally out of wood. Okay? Your foundation is wood, your plumbing is wood, your your sewer is wood. Everything's wood. That's the human body. Everything is cells. Different shapes, different sizes, different organs, different glands, skin, bone. How slick. All cells. <laughs> cool. And then you have to, of course, turn on those cells, activate them with energy and things like this. And then, of course, uh, there are the glands of control, which are the signalers that makes everything happen. And then you have uh, uh, the elimination side of this. But everything, structurally and functionally, are made with cells. Give him chemistry and a blood and a lymph fluids in there, a little H2O perhaps, but ultimately all tissues are cells, right? How fascinating that is. So if you let's start from a very healthy situation where let's say you come into this world uh, maybe uh, a million years ago or whenever, but you've got a very healthy body, right? Now, humans started down this road when they migrated outside of the tropics. They started this acid-ash diets. Acid-ash diets means that the food that you're eating is acid-forming. And we talked about that before. The difference between a lemon, even though it's acidic, is an alkaline ash former. Proteins are acid-ash formers. Most grains are acid-ash formers. All beans are acid ash formers. Pasteurized dairy products are acid ash formers. So all these acid ash formers simply mean, and these are is well documented from universities, that the ash, the byproducts, the end all of digestion leaves an acid hit on the body. So that means that the acids go into the blood, this sort of thing. So this begins the process of acidifying the body. Well, the body is a base dominant body, an alkaline dominant body, not an acid dominant body. Therefore, the foods one consumes cannot be acid ash foods because that will bring the whole aspect of acidosis, agglomeration, cationic environments, all the things that you're seeing now that medical doctors loosely call diseases. So this starts when man starts consuming foods that again have an acid forming scenario which then has a bump on the mucosa of the body. Your mucosa of the body is there for your protection. And when you consume foreign chemistry or abrasive chemistry, and this is also true of hot peppers, you get mucus produced from the mucosa. And we all know by now that the number one mucosic responsive proteins are dairy proteins and uh, this is a problem. Take also that a lot of mothers are consuming acid ash diets which then are making their fluids in the body acidic except for the blood. You cannot make your blood acidic without croaking yourself. So important to understand that and when you start consuming these foods from a healthy scenario you start creating an, a, an acidic environment with mucus you start getting mucus in the bronchial trunks, in the lungs, in the sinuses. When your body goes to move this, and this is called an acute condition. You've created acute condition by consuming foods that are foreign to the human body. Remember, we're frugivores. So most things down from there, except for vegetables, have a mucosic response at some level or another. And it creates an acid environment that the body has to deal with because an acid environment has to be met with electrolytes to neutralize this. And electrolytes come from alkaline dominant foods predominantly. 
So as we begin to be congested by eating these foods, we're creating acute manifestations. Acute manifestation is simply a cold and flu-like symptom. A cold and flu-like symptom is not something you catch per se. And we'll talk about that. A cold and flu-like symptom, if you look at it, is a detoxification symptom. You get fevers, uh, your, your body is starting to expectorate mucus, your sinuses, everything gets swelling, then starts to break up. You start getting mucus, coughing up mucus and sinus running, sneezing, pulling this mucus out. Those are acute manifestations. This simply your body trying to get rid of what you put in there, what you created, not what the what microbes created, what you created. The suppression of these acute manifestations seen by medical doctors and not understood at all by the medical community because they treat cold and flu-like symptoms one of the worst things you can do and a lot of European medical doctors have said stop treating cold and flu-like symptoms, it's dangerous. That starts the process of these four phases of dis-ease. So an acute manifestation, if you have blue eyes, is going to turn it white. Look in your blue eye. Everything that's white in there in the trabecula, those fibers, those are that limp stagnation of the acidic kind at acute levels. In a brown eye, which most brown eyes are supposed to be light brown, it makes a little darker shade of brown. As we continue to make these acute manifestations by continuing to consume these foods, not relating the fact of cause and effect, not understanding how simple that is, and, bl- and medical and people blaming other things outside of your diet, then we continue that process of consuming foods we are told through propaganda and brainwashing that are good for us. Like dead animals, dead beans, dead grains, things like this. Nothing living. And of course, as we then suppress these acute, they become subacute. They go down worse. A lot of times you lose symptoms that you even have a problem from this. And this thing starts churning. It turns a blue eye yellow. That white starts to turn yellow. In a brown eye, darker brown. When you have a cold and flu-like symptom, the acute phases come out as clear mucus and white mucus, basically. But the subacute stages, you start coughing up yellow mucus, which matches your yellowing in your eye. It's that simple. It all correlates perfectly. Now, as we continue to create acute manifestations and ignore the symptomology or treat that with pharmaceuticals or even herbs, then you're creating all these manifestations start going deeper and deeper and deeper. And the third stage is the chronic stages. Now, in the acute to subacute stages of lymph stagnation, you start imposing on cells and can create cellular hyper or hypoactivity by the congestive and acidic nature. This can create hyperthyroidism, hyper anything in the body, or hypo conditions. Either one, flip a coin. However, when you leave the subacute stages and dig in there and your body's getting more into the chronic levels, this turns a blue eye brown. I have brown eyes here. I've shown you that you only see a speck or two of blue. That's how chronic the lymphatic system is. This then sets up hypofunction always of tissue. It suppresses the function and tissue. Everything starts to go into the hypofunctions. In a brown eye, it turns it very brown. These chronic stages are like arthritis and fibromyalgias and lupuses and limes and things like this where you've had years of lymph stagnation without the proper adrenal steroid effects and all the effects the body does to counteract this acidosis. The loss of calcium, the bone spurs, all the things you're witnessing is simply the body's effort to deal with extreme chronic acidosis. Remember, we went over that study from a university, the calcium buffering system. If you're a medical doctor and you don't understand that, then you don't know why people have varicose veins, why they have petechia, bruising easy, why they have depression, osteoporosis. You don't understand any of those things. Why you have bone spurs. You don't understand any of those things. Prolapsus, uh, spasticity. You don't understand any of those things. But it's important that you as the lay people do. Because if, if you have a modality that's lost and got their head up somewhere, that's, the sun doesn't shine, you don't want to go there with them. Because that's what will happen to your world. You'll have a world where the sun doesn't shine. 
So I really want to understand these. In the final stages of lymph toxicity and cellular weaknesses, we end up in the decay or the atrophy or the degenerative states. Medical doctors simply call these states the cancer states. Ridiculous, because these are the degenerative states. After a while, it's no longer inflammation on the outside of the cell. You're breaking down the interest, the cell inside of itself, what we call intracellular acidosis, and the cell is going to mutate from that. You're going to suppress its function by mucus and acidosis, but you're going to mutate it as it becomes intracellular acidosis. And you can call that a cancer cell if you want, and make people full of fear, but you have to understand that you have these four processes to get there first. You can't make a cancer cell out of an acute condition. That is an a that is the beginning of an atypical cell. And as you move through the subacute toward chronic, you're making cells atypical in whatever location that's happening. The natural thing, scheme of things is that after a while you don't remove that asset and you have a chronic stagnation, you're going to chew up cells. Is that any 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 wonder that it doesn't take place? No. It's easy for people to understand. If you understand, these four phases are important. Here's an example. Jim entered the hospital in an acute case of appendicitis. All right. So basically what that's saying is that he has pain immediately. There's a little fallacy with that statement, and I want to lead you to it. So he has an acute pain right on set. He runs to the ER. They get him to the ER. They found that his appendix had burst. So they suction him out, sewed him up, saved Jim. That's a little wrong. That's not how that happened. Uh, Jim was not in an acute case of appendicitis. He had an acute case of pain. Uh, actually, it's not an acute case. It's a degenerative case of pain. Jim entered the hospital with a degenerative case of appendicitis. Opened him up and found that it had, it had burst and everything else. That's not an acute condition of an appendix. That is a degenerative state of an appendix. See, so you have to understand these four phases that the body goes through, and we all go through those phases. And when you detox, they start reversing themselves backwards. You start eliminating, you start regenerating that which is degenerating. You start moving back through the chronic stages and eliminating those symptoms and coming back through the acute stages and, the, and, and then the acute. You can pick up every symptom you've ever had in your life before. Even from trauma, car accidents, or whatever, you can start picking up symptoms that are stored in cell memories. So detox is a world of walking backwards and cleaning out all the mess, the mucus, the acids that we put in there, or the body has created through its response mechanisms to the foreign proteins and foods that we're eating. That's all that is. So it's important that looking where you are in the eyes at these uh, these stages. Because each stage offers its own level of problems. The acute and subacute, those are easier stages for anybody to get rid of. We don't we treat those medically like they're some kind of diseases. Are you going to have microbes involved? Always. Why? Sewer system. Sewer system. And when you have sewage backing up, whether it's proteins or whatever, you're going to get these things breaking down. Putrefaction in the body, fermentation. So we have fungus growing all through us because we're not eliminating our carbons and our nitrogens and all this. We're holding you read, we're holding all this in the body. After a while on these high proteins, the kidneys, of course, lose the ability to filter because all these proteins and all this acidosis now is affecting kidney function and bowel function. We know that man's colon is in a hell of a bad, bad shape because of high protein diets. This is a proven fact by, I bet, hundreds of studies. And of course, the latest was the World Health Organization 30 year study. So, you know, I don't care for the World Health Organization that much, but when the World Health Organization does a study, and it is uh, showing the uh, drastic effects of protein diets on the GI tract, linking it to cancers. I'm in. Because we've had studies like this for years and years uh, proving this point. And the proof of that is when you stop eating those, go back to a living food diet, foods that are more harmonious with the Homo sapien, and you use a few herbs to fix some of the weaknesses, all this goes away and repairs itself. There's proof in the theory. There's no proof in the theory of high protein diets and all this stuff that the medical are claiming because it creates more acidosis, more problems, and the patient ends up dying or going down. 
No, 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 no. Understand these four basic processes of dis-ease or congestion or what, however you wish to look at this. You can call it the four phases of disease if you want. That's their field, but whatever you want. Very important to understand these and that in detoxing is simply going back on these stages you created. You can't blame detox for anything. You have to blame, you know, fork to mouth, spoon to mouth, whatever. And when you have a cold and flu-like symptom and you start hawking up all this mucus, you start getting the clear white mucus. That's your acute mucus. That's the that's surface stuff. You want the deeper stuff. What's the deeper stuff? Oh, it's coming yellow now. Remember the subacute stages turns a blue eye yellow. Oh, here's that yellow mucus coming out. All right, come on. That's a deeper mucus. Then if you get deeper, you get into the green to brown. That is your advanced uh, subacute to chronic stages. And by the way, I have gotten black crud out of children in detox. That is your degenerative stages where you're starting to see a lot of putrefaction and fermentation in the human body and the death of cells are assured. And these are just stages we've created by suppressing the acute stages. If you never, if you always cleaned out an acute stage, and here's an example. And I've told this before, one, for, for probably a good year I was craving a chocolate malt. Oh, and there are such things as called hot fudge malts. Oh, I remember, oh my God, and I was craving it so bad. This is probably 20, 20 years ago or more. And our mall down here has a little ice cream shop. And I see kids there all the time and stuff. I'm going, oh. So I went up to this guy in the mall and I said, listen, do you make little baby malts? He's looking at me and he said, well, yeah. And I said, I just want a little bitty. I just want a little bitty thing. I, I just want to taste it. Right? So he made me a hot fudge malt. Oh. So I'm walking down the mall out to my truck. First time. Oh, so good. By the time I get out to my truck, I've got a sore throat from all the mucus from these fine of dairy proteins. These are not digestible proteins. They're constipating proteins. Just bad, 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 right? So I got a sore throat. Well, if I didn't realize that I created this by drinking that friggin' thing, uh, of course, I only drank about half of it and threw it away because I felt it coming. Mucus forming foods, all right? If you get mucus and congestion in your throat or a sore throat, don't blame microbes. Blame the mucus you created by the very types of food you're eating. So if I if I would have thought, oh, I caught something in the mall, I got to go to my MD and get an antibiotic, that would have been stupid of me. So I would have suppressed an acute manifestation that I created. Where would have that mucus that I was <coughs> getting out, where, where, where would that have gone if I would have suppressed that stage? It would have been shoved deeper interstitially around my cells. And of course, that sore throat would have lasted, uh, could have got rid of it there with an antibiotic real quick. Now, I didn't know that was created from the milk and I went and had another one. More mucus, more suppression. Pretty soon I got a tumor or I've got nodules in my thyroid or I got heavy sinus congestion. I got bronchitis. I got pneumonia because I didn't, I was treating it like I caught some disease and didn't realize I'm creating all this. So I went home, got an apple, <coughs> hocked up a big wad of mucus, sore throat went away, and I was good. Because I knew I created the mucus and I needed something to break up mucus, which fruits are stringent in nature and break up mucus. They also hydrate, because most of this is coming from an acidic side of life, and they hydrate, of course, and then you get more of an uh, anionic environment, which breaks things up and then allows things to be expectorated. The medical community has brainwashed the humans to the point of idiocy. And this is a sad day for them because this is bad karma for these guys and they're going to have to live through these conditions that they're treating. And they're going to have to deal with them the right way in their own world. It's important that everyone understand these four phases and don't get caught up in the medical doctor's stupidity there. And remember, if you have hyperactivity or hypoactivity, you can be in acute to subacute stage. The chronic stages are always hypo. Everything's going down. Everything's going down. And the next, as you move through these deeper chronic levels, you start destroying tissue because these acids have been in there way too long and become intracellular acidosis as well. So you start destroying the cells. Is that, is that hard for people to understand? No. 
But no, we have to put it in some mystique like cancer and scare people to death and treat that. You have to understand that most people that die from degenerative states are dying from the treatment of these degenerative states that medical doctors have lumped into some mysterious thing called cancer, which they don't even understand. That's pretty bad to go to a doctor and take their protocols when they don't even understand what they're treating. And that's where you get acid treating acid. Ho ho ho, that's not chemistry. And any medical doctor that blow back on you or me saying that we're 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 uh, pseudoscience, phew, that's because that's the kettle that's the the black kettle painting itself black. That 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 that's that's how when the criminals go, no, it's you that's creating the problem when really the finger needs to be pointed backwards. We are the one species that are eating out of our element. We're eating acid forming foods instead of base forming foods. That's a big no no for all species. The cat family suffers from that the most. And they suffer it from lower endurance and uh, uh, just uh, no endurance, asleep all the time, and just not a life. Uh, just not a good condition in the cat family. When everything is linked to the same thing, it is cause and effect. What you eat is cause and effect. And understand the Homo sapien vertebrae. We are islanders. We are frugivores. We not might not be able to get there back there yet, but we are high frugivores, and we can handle some vegetables. Thank God. So you've got to look at those and understand that when we change our diet to those types of foods, everything starts hydrating. You start to see that cationic environment becoming an anionic environment. This takes a little time for this to happen. Then you start to see more chemistry in your in your uh, urine. You start to sweat out more things. If you're acid, your skin could look a little red or a little worse. But these are acids coming out of you. At least you're not keeping them in you and burning your cells up. See how that is? That's how simple all this is. Is right around these core principles. Fixing these core principles here, you'll stop these phases of disease or disease or or, or, or stagnation or, or or forms of acidosis. Because you can simply say these four stages are different stages of acidosis. The final being the final stage, the deterioration, the atrophy stage. Call it cancer, call it whatever you want, but in reality, it's just the degenerative stage of tissues. And yeah, you're going to lose cells. They can re be rebuilt. But to rebuild tissue, you have to remove that which is stagnant, correct? Common sense. You can treat that with pharmaceuticals, and all you're going to do is probably offer yourself or hurt yourself even more to control something you need to fix. It's that simple. So your diet and your herbs are designed to fix those issues that we've discussed here and to stop this movement of, of these stages and reverse them backwards through the acute manifestation of the stage and then back to Wellville in a strong, healthy state uh, 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 condition. And these, these states are beyond human experience. But some of you are tapping those stages of high magnetic energy, high energy levels, high levels of health. And you see what it's doing to you. Look at Ian. He's really, he went down real skinny and then up he went. And now he's experiencing some of these higher levels of vitality. Remember this one? It's all in the teeth. I mean, there's proof everywhere. There's proof everywhere that we're frugivores. Everywhere. Only those that wish not to look. The deniers. Who cares? Those guys are going to em embellish their own suffering. Oh, don't worry about that. You have to have detached compassion. What is the number one cause of making everything go down? Acids in the lymphatic system, not the blood system. The blood is only the delivery system. And it is the individual that has to understand the difference between acid forming or acid ash foods and base forming or alkaline forming foods, uh, uh, the difference between those two. You cannot maintain health of a species on acid forming foods. Impossible. And it is not done anywhere in nature. You don't see that anywhere. The closest to that is the cat family, which they still try to get predigested protein through the gut tissue and predigested uh, vegetable matter.